Field Cup has had plenty of overseas participants over the years, good, bad and indifferent. But there can be little doubt about which British imports have created the most attention, Martin Afire and Ellery Hanley. When East met West in the middle of 1989, there was little for either side to play for, with both units among the also-rans. However, the Sydney Premiership debut of Afire boosted interest in an otherwise uninspiring match. Chariot's first touch of the ball brought instant results. Through their 5 8 Tony Melrose, there's plenty of long balls out off his way and plenty of kicks in behind the defence. Well, here's a chance for him. He's got a try in his first game. He's picked up over 100 in two seasons. Hallelujah, says Afia. First real touch from open play. Opposing a fire that day were his Great Britain colleagues Ellery Hanley and Gary Schofield, who also brought the football stadium to life. But in the end, it was the boot of another Briton, Joe Lydon, that determined the two Winfield Cup points on a day where local talent took a back seat to a handful of tourists from the old days. ...tackles against East and try and maintain some pressure, which is something they haven't been able to do all game. Uh, West coming away with it. And here's Hanley able to stand there. The question has got to be asked whether he did, in fact, impede a defender getting to him. Well, the answer comes out, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> the referee saw it from down there close handy. He, he may well have been a vital decision as Leiden hits this one and puts it between the posts. Oh, now that becomes an important decision because East have hit the front again over West 11 to 10. Late. If you assembled a hundred St George supporters in a room at the same time, they'd probably all have their differences if you quizzed them on their favourite player. Yet there's one thing they'd all agree on, and that is that the club should never have abandoned Cogra Oval at the end of 1985. The years 86, 87 and 88 were forgettable ones for the Red and Whites as they based themselves at the Sydney Cricket Ground and then Belmore. But when Saints returned to Cogra for the 1989 season, there was a feeling that the soul had returned to the club. The first match back at Cogra was against Eastern Suburbs. But to the dismay of the large crowd, it was the Roosters who got the verdict in a thriller 14 points to 13. Episode 2 of the Winfield Cup's Magic Memory Series steps back a year. Roosters were keen to salvage some respect after that demoralising capitulation to Canberra and they atoned in part by playing a 12-all draw with semi-final contenders Canterbury five days later. Torrential rain made conditions difficult for the first Winfield Cup match ever played in Townsville. But that didn't prevent the Roosters and the Bulldogs from turning on an explosive encounter. Right on what they're about because Eastern Suburbs in a very handy position now as Borton brings it up towards the quarter line. The one-hander is back for Hardy and then quick hands through Cook back to Smith. Smith inside the quarter. Still going strongly. Great run from Smith. Ten metres short of the line. Golden opportunity now for Eastern Suburbs. Here's Gilmister. Somehow got a miraculous pass back for Breach. Now George Arliss, now Borton. Back it comes for Silver. This is great stuff from Eastern Suburbs. Cook to Smith. Smith goes for the line, gets it down and scores a magnificent try. Good ball away from McGann to bust Canterbury on the green. Great ball from McGann for Silver. Does he have the pace? Alton won't get it, he'll score. Great try, put it down to McGann. Upsets of deficit again haunted Parramatta when they submitted to Eastern Suburbs the following year at the same venue in an important club round. With a 20-4 lead midway through the second half, it was a match that a quality lineup like Parramatta's should never have surrendered. But instead, it was the Roosters who cruised home to record an improbable 22-20 win with aggressive centre Ronnie Gibbs leading the charge. The loss had disturbing ramifications for the Eels as it relegated them to fourth place on the table, a position that left them stranded in their quest for a fifth consecutive grand final appearance. Against the feed, won by East. And it's East with uh, Laurie Spina, pursued by Steve Ella. He's got him. No, he's beaten him. Gary Worth it is. Gary Worth. Tobin. Tobin and away goes Tellus. He's blinding with speed as fellow. He's got a score. Yes, that's the equaliser. What a great comeback by the Roosters. Have a look at Arthur. 
Whether you love Potter, Sherlock, Murray, Seedenkamp. Beautiful ball to Gaffey, and Gaffey's over for the first Eastern Suburbs try. Tom. The Magpies now as Thomas sends it right side to Taylor. On there to Farrow with Taylor wrapping around him, sending McGarry into the hole. McGarry stripping through. Bell in support. And the leading try scorer, as always, there to finish the moves. Looking to open their account, the Roosters, and it's Sherlock finding Freeman, the man most likely to do so. He sends Seeding Camp in. He one foots Bell and scores under the post. A lovely combination between Freeman and Seeding Camp. Thomas now on there to Taylor, holds the ball up on his right, sets back inside the Rooster defence and scores. That should wrap it up for the Magpies. 